guys, how's it going? I'm out in the greenhouse getting ready to start some seeds today. I'm really excited. We're still in February, but there are a few different varieties of flowers that like to be started a little bit ahead of time. Um, in fact, I'm gonna be direct seeding one of the varieties outside today. And then you can see I've got my setup here, um, some trays and then my seeds here. So let me show you what I've got going. All right, I've got my seeds right here and I shared with you guys in another video how I'm storing my seeds now, as well as a list of everything that I'm planning on planting this year and kind of a schedule on when I'm going to be planting. We'll link that video down below. So this is the seed that I'm going to be direct seeding outside. This is called showy milkweed or Asclepia speciosa. It's a, um, you can see right here, sole food source for monarch butterfly caterpillars. And I really want to provide more um, food for butterflies and just uh, more flowers to attract pollinators and that sort of thing. So I figure this is a good way, a good place to start. Let me show you the back here. You can see the directions say to scatter the seed in fall or very early spring. And then right down here, I think this is important, it says it will spread slowly from roots. Now I don't have any experience with this variety, but I know whenever I say milkweed, people are like scared of it because they think it's just gonna take over and spread like crazy. Um, so I'm hoping that because it says it'll spread slowly, that it'll actually spread slowly um, because I want to have milkweed, but I do realize there are some varieties that will seed themselves everywhere. Um, I'm actually gonna be planting this not even really on our property. It's on the very outside of our fence in a pasture um, where our neighbors have given us permission to plant. And I will be keeping a really close eye on it to make sure it's not gonna like you know, take over their land. So I soaked the seeds, they're in a damp paper towel overnight. And what that does is it helps kind of just soften up the seeds and help speed up germination. And then I do have some popsicle sticks. I'm gonna be popping one of these in the ground wherever I end up putting the seeds so I can have some sort of idea, like I can remember where they ended up. And then these are the other ones I've got going. These are the ones I'm starting today. I've got cherry brandy rudbeckia. which you can see when I get them in, I always write when I need to start the seed. There's a hundred seeds in here. And then I've got snapdragons, two different varieties. Here's Potomac White and then Madame Butterfly Bronze with white. And then these right here, I was just kind of going through to get an idea, this is what's gonna happen next. I need to um, sow the straw flowers and I've got a couple colors. There's apricot, peach, and white. And then I will be working on larkspurs um, and then these two right here. Green Gold and Dara, Ami Dara. So anyway, um, and then the rest of them will come later, like my sunflowers and stuff like that, and those are all in here. So there's a little break in the rain. So I've got the milkweed seeds, and I think we'll go take care of these first. Get these planted when it's not pouring down on me. And we need to go all the way to the end, through the garden to the end of the property. I have a pot of chives that looks horrible, but check this out. See all that green? New fresh growth. We're getting there, guys. Oh, I forgot it's really muddy get onto the gravel here also side note this is where the new ac unit went isn't that so much better than the front of the house so remember it was right there right on that concrete pad and now it's just tucked in around the side being able to move that unit just made my entire year okay so here we are it's looking pretty rough i'm hoping that our brick pathway <laughs> look at all these bricks you guys I'm hoping that our brick pathway is installed really soon. We did hire somebody to come do that for us because it's such a big project. Um, so that should be done this next month. And we also had a gas line run to our house. And this is kind of where it starts. And then they had to trench through here um, along the gravel driveway there, maybe halfway down. And then they had to go over to the house. So they did a really good job. Like it looks really clean. Like that's the only pile. I'm thinking the milkweed will be really good kind of up close to the fence and then kind of swung in front of this pine a little bit. I want it to hug the fence a bit because you know obviously the bricks are gonna go and I wanna be able to see that milkweed from both sides of the area. And I only plan on planting out to about the edge of that dirt. Like I'll start at the um, corner of our property and kind of swing out and go around this pine and kind of come to where the hay racks start there and just kind of fill this area in to soften the corner. We have big plans and a lot of work to do.
got them all planted. I've got a nice big drift right there. And the popsicle sticks just really help just to indicate like, hey, there's something here. Don't step on, <laughs> don't step on me. Um, and then right here where the gravel is, I am going to come in and probably plant something a little shorter because I think these grow like 30 to 36 inches tall. I could be wrong. I'll double check. Um, but then I can plant something a little bit shorter and the flower bed is actually going to swing. It won't be straight all the way to the fence. Wherever the pathway starts, it's going to kind of curve and meet the fence over here. So this will actually become plantable area as well. Well, that makes me excited. One flower down, a whole bunch more to go, but I'll finish off today by planting those Rudbeckia and Snapdragons back in the greenhouse. Well, I don't know where I got 30 to 36 inches because this doesn't say anywhere how tall they get. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna have to look that up. So here are my supplies. I'm gonna be planting in six packs. So there are 72 cells per 11 by 22 inch tray. I've got my seed starting mix. I already poured some into this five gallon bucket. So I need to go hook up my hose so that I can moisten this soil and then I can water them in when I'm all done. So this looks just about perfect. You want it to hold together when you squeeze it just barely. You don't want any water to be dripping from it. You, like, you don't want it to be sopping wet. But what this does is it makes it easier for you to pack it into your trays because if you were to put fully dry soil into your trays and then plant your seeds and then water them, it will dislodge your seeds and it'll create holes because it just doesn't pack in like moist soil does. I do like to use a seed starting soil mix like I showed you before I'm sitting right here because traditional potting mix is just a little bit too heavy and seed starting mix uh, makes it easier for your seedlings to get going, especially in terms of root growth. So I have this tray all filled. There are 72 cells in it. I only have, I think there's only, yeah, there's just 100 seeds in this packet of Rudbeckia. I typically like to do two or three seeds per cell whenever I'm planting them, planting seeds. Um, but since I don't have enough to fill this tray, I'm just going to go ahead and put one seed in each cell. And then I'll go back through and I think, what does that mean? 28 of the cells will get two seeds. And then we'll just cross our fingers and hope that most of them come up. But when I get ready to do the snapdragons, I'll do exactly the same thing, you know, moisten the soil, fill the trays, but I've got 250 seeds per variety here. So I think I will be able to do two, if not three, three. I should be able to do three in each cell for the snapdragons. Look at how small those seeds are. Dang. For the Rudbeckia, and you always want to make sure that you read the back of your packets, it says that light is needed for germination, so only to cover the seed lightly. So I'm going to put a tiny layer over the top of my seeds, and I was able to plant one in each one of these, and then I had 27 seeds left over, so I probably doubled up on accident. They were tiny seeds. The cherry brandy Rudbeckias are done. Everybody cross your fingers with me. I usually buy this plant, like buy this Rudbeckia in plant form. So if I could have all of these come up, that would be amazing. So snapdragons are next. I'm gonna check the packet to make sure there aren't any special instructions. And it does say that light is required for germination for this one as well. Fine layer of vermiculite covering the seed will help maintain moisture levels and prevent algae growth. I think I have vermiculite in the barn. I will have to go double check. Well, dang it, I don't have any vermiculite out here. I have a ton of perlite, um, but that's okay. I'll go pick some up tomorrow. So today I'll probably just leave the seeds on top of the soil, mist them, put the dome on. They'll be fine until tomorrow when I can spread a fine layer of vermiculite on top of that soil. All right, so I'm gonna move through this part pretty quick because it's pretty much the same as a Rudbeckia and Aaron is probably wondering what in the world I'm doing because I told him, hey, I'm gonna run out and plant some flowers really quick. And it's been a little while. So anyway, here we go. All 
three of my flats planted up. I've got my domes and my seeds I'm gonna take inside. I'm gonna leave all the rest of my seed starting stuff out here in the greenhouse because we are getting ready to leave to go to flower shows in both Philadelphia and North Carolina here in a few days. But by the time we get back, I'll want to start my next batch of seeds so everything will be out here and ready to go. Um, and it's really interesting on the back of these packets, I always like, like stress, make sure to read all the instructions. It does say on the Snapdragons, that after the seedlings have three to five true leaves that you should move them to a place that have 50 degree nights and 60 degree days which by the time they have those true leaves um it should be perfect temperature out here in the cold frame for them to live out here which is great because it'll free up space under one of my grow lights um this is not a heated cold frame but it stays about 20 to 25 degrees warmer than it is outside and it is starting to warm up i mean i i think our lowest temperature in the next 10 days it's in the 30s somewhere so that should be about in the 50s somewhere at night um, for the Rydbeckia it does say to grow them at 68 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit so those will stay inside I also make no guarantees no promises on any of the varieties I planted today because usually I start with plants I don't grow an awful lot of flowers from seed I did last year I did some zinnias I've done some others in the past um, echinacea and I mean I could probably write down a list of stuff I've started but I don't do it normally and all of these varieties I never have so this is gonna be an experiment for me and probably a good learning process. So if you guys have some words of wisdom or some uh, little nuggets you wanna share, nuggets of information you wanna share with me, please leave me a comment down below. So let's take these inside and I'll show you where they're gonna live for the next little bit. All right, there they are. And that's where they're gonna live for a little while now. It is a little dark in here, so sorry about that. The lighting's kind of bad. Um, but you can see that I've got them all on this shelf. They don't sit quite on the shelf. They're kind of sitting on top of it, but that's okay, because these trays kind of act as a giant saucer. I've got my Bandam Butterfly Bronze, Potomac White Snapdragons, and then the Rudbeckia. I do have other seeds going. Right now I've got a flat of Sweet Italian Basil, which most of it's looking pretty good. I need to fertilize really bad. I've got some blue glitter Eryngium or Sea Holly, and I didn't have the best germination on it, and then I let it dry out and I lost a couple more. So I think, I think there's like, I don't know, 13 or 14 left in there, which will make a nice drift in the landscape. I've got a bunch of white geraniums and four Cherry Falls tomato plants. And then on the top shelf, I've got some succulents going. These are the ones that I took apart when I uh, did a video on a stretch succulent. Um, I took these leaves off of that succulent and they're already forming little babies so fast. Like, look at the roots. Crazy root growth. And this one I set on the tray the same day. Look at that. Isn't that the most perfect little baby Echeveria? Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you what I'm working on right now. And we will do more seed starting later on um, as I have like two or three more batches of seeds that I need to get through and get started um, as the dates kind of approach. So I'm hoping that I have some really positive progress reports on these seeds. Um, as we go along. I'm really, really hopeful because I've got a lot of bare areas and I think that these would just be so pretty and uh, not to mention the fact that I want to do more cut flower displays this year. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Russell, you are so distracting during that whole thing. I could see you trying to hang on the curtain.